What's up everybody, this is Blockus, and today I'll be showing you this customizable item shop that I built with Create.3. And I'll have you know that a regular item shop built with vanilla Minecraft is usually a lot bigger, more complex, and much harder to build. Now this Create.3 shop is still a bit complex, but I believe that it's a lot easier to understand. So let me go ahead and show you how this thing works, and then once you see what it does, we can go and look at all the redstone behind the scenes. Okay, so now it's time to select something and buy it from the shop, but I'll show you first that if you don't make a selection and you go and place a bunch of money, nothing is gonna happen. So let's just leave five here, for example, and go pick something that costs five, like this light gray concrete. And when I press it, you'll see the button, um, the light comes on and stays on. So I can go and open the chest and I'll find my two gray concrete right here. In addition, uh, if I place, obviously if I place 10, I should get four concretes, I imagine, because it's five for each two. So there's two, and then if we wait for a little bit longer, the other two come in. So as you see, this is pretty consistent as it comes to exact amounts. Now let's try giving it some change. Let's see, for example, this thing costs six, so let me put, instead of putting 12 in there, I'm going to put, I don't know, 14. So right here, when I place these and go select this guy, you'll see that we will get our two items, hopefully. Here's the second item. And now we have some change that's still in the system. And we have two options to proceed here. I can go ahead and buy something that costs two and is going to deliver. But just to show you that it is in the system, I can just turn off my selection and the change will appear back in the chest. And it was too fast for me to even catch it. So at this point, I can go ahead and spend it or obviously I can take it off the chest. So now we should get some orange concrete and our purchases are complete. So as you see, the system is super fast because I've seen those in vanilla Minecraft and they are usually super slow. And the basic logic behind this system is actually pretty simple, but then the logistics to take everything around added a whole lot of space, especially the part where I saved and returned the change and all of that good stuff. So now that you've seen how this thing works, let's go ahead and look at all the redstone. So to get started, I want to point out that each column of these is responsible for a single item. And I have all the color codes and everything having the same item. For example, these redstone links, as well as the filters are all going to match so that it's easier to know what is happening anywhere. Because if we have different kind of redstone links with different filters, and then there's all these different kinds of blocks here and it gets confusing. So let me get started explaining what each one of these segments to do. First of all, the item shop itself actually starts right here. It's these two funnels, or in fact, it's this one funnel with the diamonds, this chest, and then these two funnels leading out of it. This is the vast majority of the logic and everything else is needed to move things around and make it act like an actual shop. Basically, Right here, you have a filter on the funnel with the currency that you want to accept and the number that is the price for the item you want to sell. Next, you have this chest, which actually contains the item you want to sell, in addition to a little bit of space to accept money because we're going to share the same space. And now you see two funnels coming out of the bottom with the same amount, the cost, as well as the payout that we want with the filter of the actual material so that we don't accidentally send the money back through this funnel. With that, you'll see that these two funnels are locked. There's a torch right here and there's one on the other side over there that's locking it. So what happens is whenever a payment is made, it comes down here and this chest has diamonds. This content observer right here, which you can't see, let me break this. And you'll see that there's a diamond here. So whenever there's a diamond in the funnel, in the chest right here or the crate, the content observer is gonna send a signal through this redstone link, which has the same color as the item inside. And you'll see that then we have this redstone link right here, as well as this redstone link right here. So what it means is whenever a diamond arrives in this chest, you're going to unlock these hoppers for a quick moment while the diamond goes through. So now then the payment is going to go through here and then the uh, equivalent amount of payout is going to come out through this chest and then the torches will light up again and lock the funnels. 
And if you have more money in the chest, then the funnels are going to remain open for the amount of time enough to release enough of these um, to, to make the appropriate payout. And right here, you see the diamonds are all arriving through a traditional line of hoppers leading under those payment chests so that you don't actually have to go collect the payment from individual chests. So with that said, let me go ahead and walk you through what happens when you pay because it's time to cover all the logistical parts of the system. Okay, so this time we're going to get us some pink concrete right here, which costs seven. But we're going to toss, I'm just going to toss a whole stack in here. And we're going to wait for a little bit to see the items start to come in because there's seven for each I'm guessing two, so it's going to take a bit for everything to come in as the diamonds are rotating. So while that's happening, let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on in the back. You see, as soon as you place some diamonds here, they should come out on the conveyor belt as long as you have made a selection. If you don't have a selection made, this torch would be on and this funnel would be permanently locked until you select something to buy. And that's achieved by having all these redstone links right here and right here. These are associated with each button. And whenever you press the button, it will light any of these sending a signal through this line of redstone, which will deactivate the torch and allow us to accept the payment. And as you see right here behind the main buttons, I have these power toggle latches, which we talked about in the tutorial I made recently. And if you haven't seen that, you might want to go ahead and watch it because it explains how to use a lot of these components that I'm using here. So getting back to the point, when we light up this, uh, any of these items, we're going to turn off that torch. But at the same time, we're going to turn off a torch behind it. And as you see, this here is a line of funnels and a line of crates that is above the original logic that I explained earlier. And what this does is make sure that we can retrieve items from the conveyor belt as well as sort them a little bit later, as I'll show you. So these aren't actually a part of the logic, but I need them to create space and to lock and unlock stuff. So as I was saying, when this is unlocked, the system is going to know that this is the only funnel that's accepting payment right now. So as long as it gets a chunk of seven diamonds passing above it, it would accept it and then it would go through the process that I will explain in a second. But if it doesn't, there's extra, for example, right here, right now, when we're getting a large amount and so it can't take all of the money at once. And in other cases, it happens and perhaps we reach that point at right now is when you put in extra and so nothing can accept it at the point. It's under seven and it keeps running here. Maybe it's four or five or whatever it is. So what happens in this case is that this diamond is going to go all the way to the end, get collected here through this crate and then down onto this lower conveyor belt. Now this lower conveyor belt is very cool because it's actually a sorting system integrated right into the selling platform. So all of these chests contain the items that you want to sell and then you set up these funnels with these filters so that you can always load up all of the items you want to sell from this crate instead of actually having to go and open up each chest and put items into it. And at the same time, this serves the purpose of returning the change or saving it in the system because right here we have the trash collector for the sorting system, which will collect any items that aren't here. And then right from under it, we have a funnel that's always unlocked that will only take diamonds out. And as soon as a diamond is taken out, it, it empties out into this crate and then directly onto this conveyor belt. This conveyor belt is also the same place that receives the payout from all of these little shops. And what happens here is that it tosses it into this soul sand column water, which sends it all the way up to the initial chest right here. So that if I decide that I'm not going to buy anything, it's just going to make a loop. And then as you see, we're getting all our diamonds here. So in this case, and this is kind of a weak point for the system, is that the diamonds got separated early on, which is why we were not able to buy with it. So, but the solution luckily is simple enough. Once you turn it off, you'll see all your change here and you might sometimes find out that you actually do have enough to buy one more batch and you can go ahead and do that. So now that you've seen how everything mostly works, I wanted to point out a little bit about this whole rotation thing as well as the line of water. 
Basically, this thing is so low stress that you can actually run it on a single fan motor. Now, it would probably be the slowest shop in the world because it would run extremely slow, but it would still work. And uh, that wasn't the case when I first designed it. Uh, when I first started, I had a fan right here instead of a water column. And so for the fan to actually blow items all the way up here and into the chest, I needed a 192 speed, at least on this motor. But right now, if I turn the speed down even to one, the system is theoretically working because nothing needs to be faster. The item is eventually going to make it where it needs to go. So I think the fact that the water column saved us so much energy was uh, pretty cool and that I wonder if there is actually a better and easier way to transfer items up in Create. So if that's the case, let me know. But I thought this came in pretty conveniently and fit nicely into this system. I believe that this is all I wanted to show you about this build. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.